ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله افضل الايام يوم زادك علما او منحك حلما او منعك اثما brothers and sisters the best of all days is a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases you with knowledge because that's a sign of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a day that increases you with patience because that's a sign of firm and straight upright mind and a day that increases you or increases you with righteousness or keeps you away from sins because this is a sign of inner gratitude, ungratefulness to the ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a day that increases you with knowledge and increases you with patience and decreases you in sins is a wonderful day. And that is the best of days. Brothers and sisters, in Masaib, وجدت أيها الأحبة في الله وجدت للتحذير والخوف ولم توجد للمناعة calamities Allah سبحانه وتعالى strikes people with it as a warning for them from what they are doing to come back and straighten up to scare them from the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who deviate and from the hellfire. It is not meant to give you immunity and getting used to pain and calamities and continue in the path that you have. Call Allah ta'ala, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَمٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكِ فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ نَبِيٍّ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِي قَرْيَةٍ مِنْ نَبِيٍّ إِلَّا أَخَذْنَا أَهْلَهَا بِالْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَضَرَّعُونَ وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عمل أن ترجع لله سبحانه وتعالى الهدف من المصائب أن ترجع لله سبحانه وتعالى هذه مش مصيبة يا أخوان باي دوي This is a sign إن شاء الله هذه ابو محمد وين ابو محمد هذا ابو محمد لازم يجيب له واحد هيك تكون ثابته هون مشان المشايخ يعملوها ان شاء الله المصائب يا اخوان تقع على المؤمن وغير المؤمن والهدف أن تتضرع لله سبحانه وتعالى الهدف أن ترجع لله سبحانه وتعالى الهدف أن تتعب وأعطيكم مثال I give you an example إن شاء الله just to show you that calamities are meant for you to come back to Allah سبحانه وتعالى are meant for you to come back from the deviance to the straight path meant for you to know the power of Allah سبحانه وتعالى meant for you to supplicate and raise your hand and know who you are and who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not meant that you get used to it and you say, oh, life goes on. And unfortunately, that's what happens. But I'll give you an example why. لو أن السرقات ازدادت وكثرت في البيوت وفي أماكن العمل 
فماذا تفعل؟ تقول زي زي غيري ان سرقوا هم خليني انا اسرق؟ ولا تحتاط؟ اكيد تحتاط. If theft is increased, what would you do? You say, oh, everybody got stolen, so why not I get robbed too? Or do you prepare yourself and protect yourself? Naturally intelligent person, prepare himself and protect himself. If you know that this road, <laughs> there are too many tickets, the police is always there. Those people who like to deviate and speed, what would they do? They take care and they slow down and they follow the law. Why? Because this is what it's supposed to do. The calamities, the bad things that happen to the person, it's supposed to straighten them up. Punishment is meant to bring you back to the right path. It's not meant to humiliate you. It's not meant to oppress you. خَلَقَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ الْجَنَّةِ وَخَلَقَ النَّارِ حَتَّى تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الصَّالِحِ لَهُ ثَوَابٍ وَلَهُ جَزَاءٍ وَلَهُ احْتِرَامٍ وَلَهُ تَبْدِيرٍ عِنْدَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ وَأَنَّ الْمُخَالِفِ لَهُ عِقَابٍ وَلَهُ إِهَانَةٍ وَيَسْتَحِقُّ ذَلِكَ وَاخْتَارَ ذَلِكَ بِنَفْسِهِ That's why heaven and hell are there. One to reward you, Jannah to reward you, and to show you how grateful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you when you do good, and the other one to punish you and to straighten you up if you don't believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do, he is there. Ayuhal ahibbatu fillah. Akhtar shi' fil masaib inna ktitawad alayha. The worst part of calamities is to get used to it. And guess what? We are getting used to it. Unfortunately. Corona. Seems like some of us are enjoying it. يعني هذا الكورونا مصيبة كارثة لكن البعض يبدو أنه متبتع فيه ما شاء الله ما في داعي تروح المسجد هلا عندك عذرك وانت ما بدك تروح أصلا ما شاء الله ما في داعي تتبرع الحمد لله الله ريحك من هالأشياء هذه ما في حدا بيعمل تبرعات ولا في حدا بيسألك وكلهم اثنين ثلاثة وبيطلعوا كذلك تفرج على الطلاق طار المرأة مش صابرة ومش طايقة حالها والزوج الله يعينه على حاله كذلك انظر إلى العائلة مثلا وانظر إلى الفواحش انظر إلى تمرد الرجال على النساء وتمرد النساء على الرجال جلس الرجل مع المرأة خرب البيت لأن الله سبحانه وتعالى خلق الرجل في الخارج والمرأة في الداخل لكن عندما اجتمعوا لمدة طويلة أصبح في قيادة ثنتين البيت عادة للبرة والخارج الزلمة دخل الزلمة على البيت صار يحط قوانينه وقواعده بطلت المرة تتحمل وهذا واقع وكذلك إذا المرأة وضعت نفسها في الخارج ما بتحمل الرجل لذلك ما في رجل بحب حتى زوجته تدخل المكتب تبعه صح ولا مش صح مين فيكم بحب يا شباب زوجته ترتب له المكتب ما شاء الله في we have we have one Brother, he likes that. Brothers and sisters, calamities of Corona changed us. Many of us got used to it. Got used to it to the point like they don't need to come to the masjid. They got used to not coming to the masjid. Now it's hard to convince someone even if there is no risk. Khalas puts it in there. Just like Jumu'ah prayer. You find some people, it doesn't matter what you do, they come late. Sitting at home, husband and wife, they can't go alone to leadership. The husband's job is not in the house. The rules of the house differs from the rules of outside. Most men don't like their wife to even arrange their desk because he has his things and he knows what he wants and where he wants it. Even if it looks like a mess, it is organized in his mind in the way he does it. The wife doesn't know that. Just like the husband coming to the kitchen and rearranging the silverware and the plates. It looks to him like it's a mess, but the wife knows where everything is. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala great when he puts someone outside and someone inside. So when we have the calamity of Corona, it's not like we don't have to donate. We don't have to come to the masjid. We don't have to be patient on one another. Oh, it happened. It's taken too long. A year, two years, we got used to it. Now, I guarantee you, if things go as perfect, you're going to have a hard time trying to get people close to each other. They enjoyed six feet rule. To the point, in the masajid, I see people here, one here, one here, one here, the other one came, second line. I said, brother, fill the first line. You got gaps. I've seen another brother come in six feet, six feet, and the other one, 12 feet or whatever. Not because he wants to distance himself from the other person, but to him it became like, uh, just pray anywhere. It's fine. Who said line up? Who said straight line or shoulder to shoulder or foot to foot? The calamity took us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and got us used to the wrong things and that is negative. We want to change that, brothers and sisters. Ta'ala nata'arraf ala hawiyyatna. Anta abd wa anta muslim ala al-aqal aw mu'min. Who are you? Identify yourself. I want to identify myself and you. Who are you? You are a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you accept it or you don't accept it, you are a slave forcefully or voluntarily. You are a Muslim. That means you submit to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You accept what he legislates and what he dictates. And that is the minimum. And you are a mu'min. A mu'min is a higher level. Tu'min billah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al-akhir wal qada khayrihi wa sharrihi bila ay ishkal wa bila ay shak. A believer, you're a believer. You believe in the six pillars of iman. Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels, the books, the messengers, the day of judgment and the predestiny, good or bad, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'la shi fi hadhi al-iman billah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani annaka murtabit billah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kulli shay. Tu'min bi anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khalaqak wa huwa yastahiqq al-ibadah ليس لأنه خلقك بل لكمال صفاته وأسمائه وأفعاله يستحق العبادة فضلا عن الخلق. Believing in Allah subhanahu wa taala, brothers, connects you with Allah subhanahu wa taala. Makes you know that Allah subhanahu wa taala created you, and therefore you worship Him simply because He deserves worship for whom He is. For his perfect names and attributes and actions, not just because he created you. كذلك تؤمن بعدل الله سبحانه وتعالى فيما قضى وأمر وحكم. You believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى in everything He judges, and everything He rules, and everything He commands. تؤمن بأن الله سبحانه وتعالى قادر. على كل شيء ولا يعجزه شيء وأنه آخذ بناصية كل دابة. You believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala able, and nothing is hard for Him, and nothing can control Him or stop Him, and He is in control of the forehead of every creature that walks on earth. كذلك. تؤمن أن الله سبحانه وتعالى عالم بدقائق الأمور وأنه سيجمعك وأنه سيحاسبك على صغيرها وكبيرها إن كان خيرا فخير وإن كان شرا فشر. You believe that Allah سبحانه وتعالى knowledgeable notices and sees and accounts for everything, little or big, and he's going to bring you back, and he's going to account you for little or big, good for good and bad for bad. This is believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
أتعرف أيها المؤمن ماذا تعني أنك مؤمن؟ تعني أنك أهلا لقبول الأوامر والنواهي قال ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه إذا سمعت أن الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول في القرآن يا أيها الذين آمنوا فأصغ لها سمعك فإنه خير تؤمر به أو شر يصرف عنك أو تصرف عنه Ibn Mas'ud said, radiyallahu an, look, look at the fiqh and the understanding. This Ibn Mas'ud, radiyallahu an, said, hafidtu sab'ina surah min fiyye Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He memorized 70 surahs from the mouth directly from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, if I know anyone who knows the meaning of some verses different than me, I would have traveled to him anywhere he is. That's how knowledgeable he is of the Quran. He said, if you hear the verse saying, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, addressing believers, not Muslims, believers, higher level, those who believe and submit and act upon that submissiveness. Fa'lam Attentively listen to it, pay attention, and know it is something good you are commanded to do, or something bad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you to stay away from. Look in the Quran and read. Every ya ayyuhalladheena amanu has this, either something good to do or something bad to stay away from. تعني أنك مؤمن أنك علي فوق كل المخلوقات علي يعني أعلى من كل المخلوقات في المرتبة وفي الشرف وفي العلم وفي النصرة وفي الولاء وفي البراء To know that you are a believer that means you are higher than all creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in level in honor, in protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in love and support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of that you are on top because you are a believer. قال الله تعالى في غزوة أحد انتبهوا هون قال وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ if you're a believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to whom? To the best of the believers. Who are they? The companions radiallahu anh. What happens in the battle of Badr? We know the disobedience of one command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam almost killed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One command. And then I come and tell, or someone tells you this is sunnah, and you say, oh, sunnah, I don't have to do it. Sunnah means to us to not do it. When someone asks you, is this a sunnah or a fard? They're actually wanted to either do it or not do it. When the Sahaba used to say, is this a sunnah? Definitely they want to do it. That's why they ask. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, because of one command, don't leave your posts, telling the archers, even if you see us snatched by the birds, meaning all dead, don't come and help us. And if we are victorious, don't come and celebrate with us. Stay where you are. But not all of them stayed. Not because they want to disobey, because they use their intellect justification. They lost the battle at the end. And almost the Prophet ﷺ got killed. And shaitan screamed that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi died. So they collapsed. Some of them could not even walk. Some of them could not even talk. Some of them said, what's left in this world? Some of them continued and became more courageous because of knowledge and because of faith. So it was so different. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala talking to the believers. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَهِنُوا الْوَهِنْ يَا إِخْوَانْ فِي الْقَلْبِ الْوَهِنْ آسِفْ فِي الْجَسَدِ وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا الْحَزَنْ فِي الْقَلْبِ أَيْ لَا تَضْعُفُوا 
بقلوبكم ولا بأجسامكم لأنه يزدكم غما فوق غم ولأنه يشجع عليكم عدوكم ولا تهنوا ولا تحزنوا وأنتم الأعلون you are on top you're a winner you're successful if you die you go to Jannah if you win you're victorious if you fight, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. If you are injured, you got the hasanat. In takunu ta'lamun, fa'innahum ya'lamuna kama ta'lamun, wa tarjuna min Allahi ma la yarjun. If you hurt, they hurt. But you have something on top of them, you are looking forward for the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they're not. Wa la tahinu, wa la tahzanu, وأنتم الأعلون بشرط يا إخوان إن كنتم مؤمنين إن كنتم حقيقة تؤمنون بوعود الله سبحانه وتعالى وتؤمنون بأن بمعية الله وتؤمنون بقدرة الله وتؤمنون بحكمة الله وتؤمنون بأوامر الله فأنتم الأعلون وإلا لا يمكن أن تعلو عند الله سبحانه وتعالى. So if you truly believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى's commands, you believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى's promise, in His ability, you are on top. And if you don't, then nothing is going to put you on top. Brothers and sisters, ولا تهنوا ولا تحزنوا وأنتم الأعلون إن كنتم مؤمنين. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى لنا ولكم الإيمان والثبات عليه أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويدفع نقمه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أيها الأحبة في الله أوامر الله سبحانه وتعالى علية وأوامر الله سبحانه وتعالى نقية وأوامر الله سبحانه وتعالى فيها التقية When you have a command from Allah سبحانه وتعالى it is high, it is big, it is valuable it puts righteousness in you when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Don't become sad, don't become weak, then don't become sad and don't become weak. لِكَيْ لَا تَحْزَنُوا عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا مَا أَصَادَكُمْ So whatever you're stricken with, good or bad, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in it, goodness for you if you are a believer. عجبا لأمر المؤمن إن أمره كله له خير وليس ذلك إلا لمؤمن Only the believer Only the believer If he has a bad day He sees it good And if he has a good day He sees it good Both of them are good to him Why? Because he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wise And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fair and just أيها الأحبة في الأحبة في الله أنت مسلم فافتخر بذلك وأنت عبد لله سبحانه وتعالى فازدد تواضعا وأنت مؤمن بالله سبحانه وتعالى فثق به إذا ازدد قربا من الله سبحانه وتعالى وازدد ضعفا أمام الله سبحانه وتعالى وازدد فقرا أمام الله سبحانه وتعالى عند ذلك فإنك تكون عليا وقويا وغنيا وكما قال علي رضي الله عنه قال من اعتمد على ماله قل ومن اعتمد على عقله ضل ومن اعتمد على جاهه ذل ومن اعتمد على الله سبحانه وتعالى فلا ضل ولا قل ولا ذل My dear brothers and sisters Connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be high. Show your need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be rich. And show your weakness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be strong. Ali radiallahu anhu said, if you rely on your wealth, 
you're going to be humiliated, down, and you're going to be poor. And if you rely on your intellect, you're going to be misguided. And if you rely on your status, you're going to be humiliated. But if you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be misguided and you will not be poor and you will not be humiliated. What month are we in? Sha'ban. This is the 19th of Sha'ban, brothers and sisters. The month of Qurra, Shahr al Qurra. Shahr al Qurra, those people who live in this Sha'ban, this is the month of fasting and the month of recitation of Quran and the month of charity. This is the Sunnah for Ramadan. You know, you have Sunnah for Dhuhr and Sunnah for Fajr. This is Sunnah for Ramadan. It makes you practice what you want to do in Ramadan. If you don't practice good here, you're not going to practice that good over there. So make sure you train yourself on Qiyam al layl for Taraweeh and make sure you train yourself on charity so you will be so generous like Al-Rih Al-Mursa Kama Kana Al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so you'll be like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like good wind good wind brings goodness for everyone bring your goodness to everyone don't limit and restrict yourself to, to give all for people who have calamities or just for the masjid or for the every opportunity give you don't know your sincerity where it will strike because not all the time you're sincere not all the time you're in the mood you don't know wallahi one dollar sincere will put you in the highest level in jannah we all know the story a woman a prostitute for a water for just water for a dog took heaven Something that we need to live by is trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Change yourself. Relate to your family. Come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Forget and forgive. Take the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from people. Be sincere. Just because you have an argument or a disagreement or maybe you don't believe in a certain project, ya akhi, you give for Allah subhanahu wa in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the shura, not the imam, not the masjid. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who receives your charity and he receives it with his right hand. Trust in that and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, من ذا الذي يقرض الله قرضا حسنا فيضاعفه له أضعافا كثيرة كيف نبخل يا إخوان؟ كيف نبخل؟ والله كيف نبخل؟ وكل ما معنا كل ما عندنا من الله سبحانه وتعالى أنفقوا من مال الله الذي آتاكم إذن يا إخوان أنت عبد وأنت مسلم وأنت مؤمن افخر بذلك أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يحيينا على لا إله إلا الله وأن يميتنا على لا إله إلا الله وأن يجمعنا به يوم القيامة على لا إله إلا الله إيمانا ويقينا وعملا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم مودانا ويسر أمورنا وأمور أبنائنا وزوجاتنا اللهم ارحم ضعفنا واجبر كسرنا واهدنا لما تحبه وترضاه إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات وآخر وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك وأكم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي